good good afternoon everybody good evening i don't know if it's afternoon and the clock says afternoon but the the sunlight says it's evening so welcome so my name is ugo and i'm part of the advising team uh for the health professions health professions uh advising at the college of health and human sciences my partner is natalie who is managing uh the zoom meeting we have two special guests. Uh, first, I'm gonna allow Allison to say a few words and then followed by our, our main guest, which is Jeff Oxendine, who's, uh, uh, who's gonna talk to you about the healthcare connection. But first, let's have Allison uh, uh, make a very important announcement to you folks. Okay, Allison, it's yours. Thank you. So hello, everyone. My name is Allison Cow, and I'm a Master of Public Health student here at San Jose State. Um, I'm currently a graduate student research assistant for Dr. Angie Buckner in the Department of Public Health and Recreation. And we are currently recruiting participants for a focus group study about San Jose State student health and wellness in 2020. So the purpose of our study is to learn more about how students describe their current health strengths and weaknesses and to better understand how students are coping, adapting and thriving in relation to the events that have impacted us all this year. So to be eligible for our study, you must be 18 years of age or older and currently be an enrolled undergraduate or graduate student at San Jose State. The study is looking for a diverse representative sample of San Jose State students. So interested students can complete our Qualtrics pre-screening questionnaire, which should take five to 10 minutes. And students who are selected to participate in the focus group will be contacted by the research team via email and students who are not selected will also be notified via email. So I have put the link to the Qualtrics survey in the chat um, along with my email address. And this has more information about the study um, in the Qualtrics link as well. And please feel free to share the link with any of your peers who may also be interested. Thank you. Now folks, some of you folks are gonna be doing similar types of studies either as undergrads or as graduate students. It's always, always good to, to see what it feels like to be a participant. And, and because later on you'll be you know, you'll be in Allison's shoes, uh, you know, analyzing the data, cr creating the uh, the Qualtrics, creating the questionnaire, doing the survey, the assessment, all these tools that are uh, both qualitative and quantitative. Um, and so I, that's just my encouragement for you folks to participate as as much as you want. It only takes about 10, 15 minutes to uh, to see if you want to continue, or if you pass the screening. <laughs> okay, so uh, thank you, Allison, for that. Um, so my name is Ugo, and Natalie's with me. We're both uh, health professions advisors, and we welcome you to this session. Uh, I've known uh, Jeff Oxendine for, for many years. He is a dynamo in our community, our community being California, uh, the Bay Area, and public health. Um, he is executive director of the Health Career Connection Program, and he's been doing this for at least 27 years, probably longer. 30, um, <laughs> 30 years now, 30th anniversary. <laughs> um, he's also uh, uh, one of our main, main forces in leading California health workforce and diversity efforts as co-director of the California Health Professions Consortium and the California Health Workforce Alliance. Uh, he's faculty in the School of Public Health at UC Berkeley. And uh, he's also taught at Harvard, the School of Public Health there. Uh, I can go on and on and on, but let's just get to why he's here. So Jeff, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Thank you for that kind introduction, Ugo, and for inviting me tonight. It's great to be here with you. And I am joined by two of my colleagues from HCC, Abu Ibrahim Biangaro and uh, Cesar Robles Martinez. Um, Abu is a um, member of our HCC Northern California and Central California placement team. And she's got her MPH from recently from UCLA. And uh, she's from the San Jose. Uh, Santa Clara area, right? Santa Clara. And then Caesar is an alum of HCC. Um, he is uh, just got his MPH from Columbia. Um, and uh, he's part of our leadership team. And he's going to um, be here to, they'll be, be, be uh, commenting after I do my more formal remarks. Um, we're here because we really hope you will apply for Health Career Connection. We hope that you are um, interested in becoming one of the next generation of uh, diverse health leaders and professionals, which is needed more than ever now in our communities with the disproportionate impact of COVID and systemic racism and all the things that we're facing as a country right now, the economic crisis and, and just the, the need for 
for more diversity and cultural linguistic competency in the health field. So um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about HCC, um, and then we'll have ample time to answer your questions. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Let's see here. Uh, which one have we got here? Too many presentations. Ah, here we go. And then I, I HCC started. I, I'm one of the, the founders of HCC, and I uh, we started after we had had our own internship programs as undergraduate students. I'm from Fairfield. I don't know if any of you are from Solano County, born in Vallejo, grew up in Fairfield. And then I went to Chico, uh, Cal State University, Chico, and uh, was fortunate to be like many, many of you, an undergraduate um, public health major. I majored in health administration. Um, and then I was fortunate to have an internship very much like HCC, the predecessor of HCC, when I was a junior between my junior and senior year and it changed my life and it launched my health career. I, I really got con confirmation that I wanted to go into public health, particularly hospital administration. Um, I got a, a job as a result of it. I got great experience and exposure. I've got mentors that helped me with letters of recommendation and career decisions. Um, and I got a great network and I got connected to Berkeley where I ended up um, believe it or not, being able to go to get my master's in business and public health and where I ended up many years later becoming part of the faculty and an associate dean. So, um, you know, it all started with this. And so that's why we do this as we want to empower you to be that next generation and to you for you to realize your full potential. So um, HCC, it's a comprehensive paid uh, full-time summer internship. Um, and it's really one of the few internship programs that A is comprehensive because it has both an internship placement in an organization, but in a com comprehensive program of career leadership, professional development, um, networking, uh, connections to leaders and graduate schools. And we'll share a little bit more about that a little bit later. So you do that, you do a placement and you do the, um, the comprehensive regional cohort program. You can see a picture here. These are some of our Southern California interns actually. So you're part of the cool thing about being HCC is that you would be part of a cohort of other students from all different schools, you know, from in your region that you'd be part of. And uh, it's about also, it's about people that are interested in public health specifically or healthcare. You're trying to decide about becoming a doctor or a nurse practitioner or PA or, or something like that um, in public health. Um, that's kind of what we're about, but more, it's not a clinical experience. It's not a research experience so much. Um, it's more practic practical experience in, in the health field. It is op also open to piece of people who are recent graduates. Um, so people who are, if you're graduating in, um, in May coming up, um, or if you've already graduated, um, you're eligible to be in HCC. And um, we, uh, we do this through partnering with um, health, leading health organizations. You do get paid for being an HCC. It's an educational stipend. Um, so you can see sort of the range of that depending on, um, on whether your organization is grant funded or not. Oh, I should say that this year we also are gonna have, it's looking like we'll have some internships in biotech and pharma, which we haven't had before, which is sort of a new area to, to, to look into but you can get a stipend while getting this great experience. And we partner with a wide range of organizations from hospitals and health centers, health plans. So you can read the, we have a lot of focus on community health centers in particular, because we really wanna help people um, serve their community, particularly in primary care and integrating primary care and behavioral health. We do have behavioral health internships. We have local health departments like um, Santa Clara Health Department and Santa Clara Valley Medical Center. Um, we have advocacy for those of you who want to make policy change, like California Primary Care Association, California Hospital Association, um, and grassroots advocacy organizations in the community working with different folks. So it's about kind of giving you this experience. We pair you with a preceptor who becomes a mentor. So it's kind of like an apprenticeship model. You work underneath someone um, or with someone, I should say, and then Oftentimes you also meet other mentors in the organization. And we do have both virtual and in-person internships. Our preference is in-person. Um, and we, that's what we had for, for 29 years, but this year we all had to adjust like you're doing with online coursework to have virtual internships. 
Um, you can see we do this. We started in Northern California in 1990, um, but we've grown um, to, to these other regions. So you could be in Northern California and the Bay Area and do something in the San Jose area or the Salinas and Monterey County, um, the uh, Santa Cruz County, San Benito, you know, those areas, or you could do them in some of our other areas as well. We go as far as up as Sacramento and Santa Rosa, Petaluma, Marin. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity, but we also have Central Valley. Uh, we've been in the Central Valley since 2008, the Coachella Valley, um, which we've been in since uh, 2010. Um, and, uh, and then you can see we're on the East Coast. So in New York, Boston, New, New York, New Jersey, uh, North Carolina, where my Indian tribe, I'm a Native American from the Lumbee Indian tribe. And, uh, and then we have Tennessee and Washington, D.C. too. And then you're, so you're part of your own regional cohort, but you're part of the HCC family and more nationally. This year, we also had a health equity scholars program for people who didn't have their internships. Um, we had a, an online health equity scholars program um, where you got training in social justice, racial justice, health equity, and great skill building like Excel, storytelling, um, project management, things like that. And then you worked on team projects too. So that's a, sort of a new thing that we offer. Um, it's a structured program so that you get a lot out of it and you and the organizations <clears throat> get a lot out of it um, because we, we, it's a short time, 10 weeks is, goes by quickly. So we wanna make sure you're clear about your learning objectives and um, what you wanna get out of the experience and you make a plan with your organization to do that. I mentioned already the different kinds of things we focus on. Um, we do really strive for, to people to prepare for graduate school so we have workshops where we have UCSF and Stanford and UCLA and Columbia and Harvard and North Carolina, you know, places like that, Berkeley, um, that come and talk about what they're looking for in medical students, in public health students, in business students, social welfare um, students, um, public policy, um, city regional planning. You know, we help prepare you. Uh, we have people come and talk about nursing, you know, as a career path. PAs, you know, those kinds of things. And so we bring that into the summer program. So the interns are happy um, with HCC and many of them are offered a job as a result of their internship. Um, the picture on the left there is M Maria Macias, who's one of my uh, favorite HCC alums. She got to um, UC Riverside Medical School um, and is from that, from that community. Um, came from an undocumented background and, and um, you know, really has done amazing, amazing things. Um, the, uh, we have 3,800 alumni nationwide now. Um, the eligibility, you know, you, you have to be enrolled or recently graduated within, I think, by 2018. If you graduate after May of 2018, you're eligible. Um, you are, um, uh, it, it doesn't matter what major you have. Um, it's not open to graduate students. Uh, it's not about GPA and, and uh, those kind of things. We're looking for people who are a good fit, you know, for the program that we have to, to offer. And we value distance travel to get to where you are and, and where you want to go. Um, part of the application is doing a statement of purpose um, where you do the, um, uh, you do a statement of purpose that um, allows you to uh, tell us is the most important part of the application where you're able to tell us why you wanna be in the internship program, um, what you wanna get out of it, what your career direction is. There's some prompts in there and we can talk more about the statement of purpose. Um, it's the important part and it's sometimes what's intimidating to people, but you've got help um, in writing it. We provide resources on that and, and it will provide some examples and, um, and you've got good resources with Ugo and others. But it's just really about you from your authentic self talking about, you know, why, what your passions are about being in the health field, what your career directions are that you want to go to, and then why this internship program would be helpful to you um, and, uh, and what you bring to the table, um, which you all bring a lot to the table. And so these are the things you have to have a good resume also, um, and it should be uh, professionally prepared resume, get, get your, your feedback from your advisors, your friends, your career center, you know, those kinds of things. And we look at all kinds of experience. So it doesn't have to be all paid. It's not, we know that everybody doesn't have paid work experience in the health professions at all times. You have 
uh, people who are, um, you know, if you're a leader of a student club or you're a volunteer in your church or you're a volunteer at an advocacy organization or you're doing research experience with a professor or a graduate student, like we value all of those kinds of things. And then, you know, we're, we're really looking for people who want to be in health or public health. Um, primarily, again, in our case, um, you can be interested in clinical, but we need you, we want you also to say in your statement of purpose, as long as it's true, that you also are interested in being exposed to at least the policy, the management, the community health or public health, you know, aspects of things, particularly in a practical kind of a way. And we really value people because it's our values of being able to support the needs of underserved communities. Um, and we do look at your, your background, your story, um, and where you come from and what you want to do. So the, um, this, act is a, this slide, I think, is not updated. It's uh, the final deadline is actually December the 13th. So it's earlier than it was last year. I guess this is an older slide. It's December the 13th. Um, if you're selected, um, you would get an interview with our HCC staff. Um, and then if you get selected from that round, you would go to interview with the host organizations. Um, to be, we really put a lot of emphasis in our, our matching process. So we wanna find out and the application asks you about your interests and your skills and those things. And we, we try to match your interests and skills with what the um, organizations are looking for, the host organizations are looking for. And so we get feedback from you and from the organization and we make a final match. Um, and then we have onboarding with the organization and the experiences are in the summer, um, usually in, starting in early June or it could be late May um, and then running until the middle of August. Um, you're not eligible if you are having summer school um, because we need you to be, this is a full-time program and the placement with the program. So we need you to really be immersed in the, in the program, we found that people can't do summer school with it. You could if we in the, if you were in the health scholars program, but not in the regular HCC internship program. And we also don't like people that are uh, studying for the MCAT um, during the program either, because we found that it's very difficult for you to to do a good job of studying for the MCAT and do a good job in your in your internship. Um, and we've had people actually get pretty burnt out, you know, trying to to do that and we don't want you to be working another job um, either just because this is a you know again this is a demanding it's a demanding program and the more you put into it the more you'll get out of it uh so i'm just the, the ballpark timeline is that we you know you'll submit your application in december we do interviews in january early february we send you out to the host organizations in march or june and then we try to make the placements probably in march or april but sometimes it spills into may so um, it's available now. I'm sorry, I guess I did pull the wrong version of the application, but the, the, the presentation, but it is available now um, on our website, healthcareers.org. Um, you, can, you can email info at healthcareers.org for more information. Um, and so, yeah, that's about HCC. I'm gonna show you two other things about um, that I have to offer, and then I will turn it over to our colleagues and then we'll get your questions. Um, in addition to Health Career Connection, um, I also recently wrote a book based on my 30 years of helping thousands of students get into health careers. It's called You Don't Have to Be a Doctor, Discover, Achieve, and Enjoy Your Authentic Health Career, which is the one that suits your unique talents, passions, goals, and lived experiences. There's only one of you in the whole universe. And so there's a lot of things you can do, and this book doesn't discourage you from being a doctor. It just asks you to make a critical assessment. We don't, we want you to, and it helps you, gives you nine practical steps to figure it out. Because a lot of people, you know, they, they want to be a doctor because they've always wanted to, or their parents want them to be, or their peers are being it, or they just think it's important. And so we need you, we more than ever, to be a doctor if that's what you want to be. And this book would help you to figure that out and to get there. But if you don't want to be a doctor, it, it shows you how to get exposed to all the other types of health career options, and then the practical steps you can get to get there. So it's available on Amazon. It's only $21, so not, not a big price for your future, or only $9 for the ebook. And then lastly, I have these things called Health Career Conversations. Um, that's a free weekly activity um, that uh, brings together people that are either faculty members of schools or people working in the field 
to share just like, what do they do? So we have on, on the 18th, we're gonna have digital health and health IT. So people talk about what they do and how they got there and what they're looking for. And some of these other ones are recorded and they'll be every Wednesday from five to six is when these are. So um, I'll put a link in the chat if anybody wants more information about this and other kinds of things we've got going. So with that, um, that's the end of my remarks about, about HCC. And uh, I'm gonna ask um, now uh, Caesar as an alum um, to make some comments about his experience and um, Abu is new to HCC, but we'll see if she wants to make any comments um, as well. So Caesar. Hi everyone. Yeah, so I just wanted to highlight a couple of points. I know Jeff mentioned about the all the different amazing workshops and presentations we have throughout the summer. This past summer, we actually had over, what was it, Jeff? Over 120 workshops, 120 yeah. hours of workshops. <laughs> yeah. And this included, you know, um, deputy directors, vice presidents, professors, founders, and, you know, of all these different um, organizations. So definitely the type of uh, exposure you get is, is it's huge um, during the summer. And another note is also during the summer, we are looking at probably doing more uh, work or a lot of organizations are, are looking at doing more work with COVID-19. Um, I know that's, that's at, on top of everybody's, everybody's heads right now, right? So definitely that's something that you should look forward to, especially um, with organizations who's, um, that's one of their goals this past summer. Um, I'm sorry, this upcoming summer. Um, as for me, I am an HCC alum from 2016. Um, I did uh, my internship with uh, Kaiser Permanente and I was there for uh, 10 weeks. I primarily work with um, their, um, their Latino population who were diabetic and were uncontrolled. And pretty much my job was to kind of figure out why uh, the Latino patients at my medical center and our service area, why they were uncontrolled and kind of report that up to senior leadership and develop a plan on how we can hopefully uh, get these uh, the patients uh, 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 back to normal, or at least more controlled in their diabetes. Um, I was lucky to be brought back on board as a full-time um, employee. So I was there for a little bit over two years, um, right before I started my master's, um, my master's program. So um, definitely, uh, I know a lot of other colleagues of mine who also were hired on at their HCC organizations, and that's definitely a possibility for you as well. And if you have any questions about my experience and anything like that, I'd be more than happy to answer them later on. Yeah, thank you, Caesar. And um, yeah, Caesar, as we mentioned, a lot of people do get hired on afterwards from their internship or they extend the internship while they part-time while they go back to school or something like that. And that's a big part of it. And we do have 3,800 alumni, people like Caesar, who are actively involved in supporting our, our students, you know, for informational interviews, for posting jobs, for um, networking and other kinds of ways, coming in and being workshop leaders, and many of them are hosting alums now. And there are many that are from San Jose State. Um, in, in fact, today I talked to uh, a Latasha Barnwell, who is from San Jose State, um, and she is out in, in Baltimore, uh, in Maryland, and she just took a job as the Director of Population Health um, at, uh, at Baltimore's largest community health center. Um, and it's a great job working on health equity in action. And she also, she before that worked at Johns Hopkins Medical Center and she was a fellow there and she got her um, MPH from Emory and she now has her, uh, getting her doctorate in public health from Johns Hopkins um, has a pre prestigious fellowship to pursue that and is uh, working on behavioral health kinds of issues. And so uh, those are examples of the kind of folks that you'll be following in their, their footsteps. And Abu is, um, and is not an HCC alum. We may make her an honorary one, um, but she is a, are one of our new team members. Um, and she maybe just tell them a little bit about your um, path and what your, the MPH that you recently did, and then we'll have questions. Um, okay, hi everybody, my name is Abu. Um, so funny story, I actually applied to HCC like a few years back, but I ended up withdrawing my application for other reasons. But um, I'm really glad that I um, can be back at HCC and just be able to be a part of um, such an amazing organization. I think this is really important, especially for me. I kind of wish I had this opportunity a um, few years back when I was undecided as to what I wanted to do in terms of my future while in undergrad. Um, 
But for me, my path was a little bit different. I was originally pre-med and I decided by the end of my undergrad that I did not want to do that. And so I interned with UCSF the year after I graduated. Um, and then I worked for a nonprofit the year after that before I began my MPH at UCLA. And I think for me, my focus is really just um, highlighting um, the experiences of underrepresented minorities and ensuring that, yeah, there's equity, whether in different uh, aspects and different sectors, whether it's education or healthcare. And that's something that I'm really passionate about. So if you, any of you have any questions in regards to that or anything with regards to the actual application for HCC, definitely let me know. I think just something to highlight is just be true to who you are and what your passion is in your statement of purpose, because I think that's something that we really appreciate um, as we're reading your applications. You know, we want to know like why is health something that's important to you and really highlight what's something that you really want to leave um, um, an impact on. So, yeah. Very well said. Very well said. So now you've, we've, you've listened to us. Um, we'd love to hear your questions. And if it's possible, uh, we would also like to see you. I mean, I know that not everybody is in a position to be able to have their camera on or maybe not be a comfortable situation. So if it's uncomfortable or it's not possible, that's okay. But otherwise, we would love to see you. And also, guess what? That might help us when we put a name to the face when we have we review your application and when we interview you we can go oh, I remember when Deborah was on the you know was on that call you know so um if you're if you're okay turning your camera on that'd be great but not necessary if you're if it doesn't work for you if I may interrupt for a minute guys uh, it's time for a little bit of of um bureaucracy here we need you guys to register and so Natalie's going to put a link on the chat so you guys can uh do a virtual sign in and fill out a, a Google form on that. Uh, it's part of the Dean's requirement that whenever we have workshops, we need students to, to sign in. Okay. And, and we'd also like that if we can get that information, Ugo, if we can then send it to people, like follow up emails to people about opportunities, if that's okay, that would be nice. Yes, that 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 to do. Yeah. By, by signing in, then that gives us permission to share this information with HCC so you get, their, you get on their database. And I will share that information with Jeff uh, after the, uh, tomorrow morning. Actually, tomorrow's a holiday, so <laughs> Thursday. Okay, and it looks like there was a question about the dates, what are the dates of the internship, and I think Caesar's answered that well. It really, the dates kind of depend on your availability um, and the host organization when they're available for you to start. I think the um, typically though, most people start in the first week, of, either like the very end of May or the first week or so of, of June, um, just so that way you can finish the full 10 weeks before you um, before you have to go back to school. Um, and that's kind of, and we like to, since you're in a cohort, um, the we bring everybody together at the same time and for an orientation, which is one of the best parts, you get to connect with other students. And, um, and so, um, yeah, so that's kind of the, the timeline. Um, Omar is asking also about the amount of time per week. So it is a full-time um, experience. And uh, it's, it, we are encouraging you to, to, encouraging you to be a professional in this case. Um, so it's, it's not an hourly experience where you're sort of watching the clock and getting paid on an hourly rate. It's that you get paid an educational stipend or in some cases an organization might pay you from their, their place, but it's a sort of a 40, 40 plus hour a week commitment um, because you, we want you to get Im immersed in what the organization does and be there to get what things do, get, th get things done. And then as Caesar mentioned, we have lots of workshops and things as well. So it you know, kind of varies by, by week probably and by the organization you work for, but we want you to come into it with a mindset of it's a full-time, at least a 40 hour commitment, but it's not an hourly thing. It's, it's like a professional, you do what it takes to get the job done. You know, we're here having a meeting after hours um, because that's part of getting the job done, right? So, um, and then let's see, questions about not recommending an internship to people taking classes. Yeah, so even during the summer school, um, we found that if you are taking a class, um, even an evening class, it's, it's difficult to do the HCC internship because you're gonna have, you're gonna be working all day and sometimes it might spill over 
you know, a little bit into the evening and then, oh, now I've got to do a seven to 10 class. And, um, you know, how am I going to really do that? Um, and it definitely doesn't work for like a daytime class because you're working for an organization and the organization doesn't want somebody to go, oh, I'm, I've got to leave between, you know, 11 and two and go to my class um, and then miss out on the workshop and important meetings and those, you know, those kinds of, those kinds of things. So, um, so it's a full, it is a full commitment. And um, if we, I, we, I believe we will offer our health equity scholars program this summer. And, and if that's the case, you can go to summer school and do that because that's probably more of a halftime commitment. Um, so that would be the thing to check if you were, if you apply for HCC and you check the box that you want to be considered for the health equity scholars program, that's something you could do with, with summer school. But even then it is, uh, there's a lot of, Caesar can attest, there's a lot of workshops during the day. And so it would be hard if you were, if your class is, you know, conflicted with some of the workshops. That we have. Right, and then also Jeff, on that uh, as well, just adding a little note on that is, even though the, the the program, the online programs are were not virtual the whole time, there are projects that we kind of conduct that happen right. outside of the 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 daily meetings, right? Which you meet with your project teams, which we assign during the summer, um, and and yeah, yeah, no, very well said. Um, so let's looking at other questions here. So yes, you can be placed at a outside of California, you would just need to apply. Um, when you apply there on the application, it asks you which regions are you applying for and which, are, and which are, and we, but we really would want you to be sure that you could do an internship in the region, in that other region, which would mean you'd be able to get housing on your own. HCC doesn't provide housing or doesn't pay for housing. It doesn't arrange housing for you. So you would have to work with, um, family or with uh, friends or just on your own, be resourceful and figure out how to get a living arrangement in another, um, in another place. So um, yeah, so that's you, but you can do an internship in other areas. And I would only list it if you think you really could do it. Um, you know, somebody's asking about how virtual works. I mean, one of the big, one of the questions will be what's next summer, you know, is it going to be remote or in-person internships. And I think none of us know right now, you know, how it's going to go. Last year, we had a, a good percentage of our internships that were virtual, but we also had some that were in-person and we had some that were a combination where people would come in for like two days a week, they'd come into the office and then three days a week, they would work remotely. I think it's gonna depend on the situation with the vaccine and with, you know, with the COVID situation at that, at that point. Um, the, uh, but the virtual internships work pretty well. We were surprised. We got good results from both the organizations and the, and the students saying, hey, the virtual you know, worked out okay. Um, and that's what we have a good structured experience. We check in with you to see how it's going. We make sure you and your preceptor are on the same page. Um, so we're doing a lot of things to help make it work. It's not the same, um, but you know what? We don't have a choice sometimes. Um, about, about making it work. And it might be that this summer you might be able to, we have one organization already that they're based in North Carolina and, uh, and in New York City and in Toronto, Canada, but they are saying that they will have interns from anywhere. So you could be in San Jose, you know, doing an internship in New York City potentially without going there. So there are some potential advantages of having the remote internship situation. Uh, let's see, other questions. These are there some you wanna answer or Abu is there, that are listed here? Uh, there's a question uh, from Lena's iPhone, which uh, is uh, do you take uh, students from F1 visas? Um, you know, I don't know the details of that. Um, does F1 visa allow you to work as an intern and be paid? Um, as an intern, I guess the answer I don't I don't know the, the difference between the different visas and and unfortunately we don't have the staff to really help you work with that. But we, you you would need the ability to, you you would need a visa that would allow you to be able to work um, and to be paid to do that work. Um, I guess that's how I would how I would answer that. Um, let's see what else are. Other questions that people, that people um, There's one about asking if you can choose your host organization. 
Well, um, you have a role in that, but uh, ultimately the match is HCC's um, uh, ability to do the match. Um, and what we do though, is and this is one of the strengths, we've been doing this for 30 years. So one of the, our strengths is that, as I mentioned, we would have you go interview with the organizations and you would be interviewing them to see if it's a good fit for you. And they would be doing the same thing. And we would normally, we normally send you to two, um, usually three, but sometimes only two, sometimes more, but usually two, usually three, I would say, that um, you would interview and then you'd come back and you'd say, hey, I went to Santa Clara Valley Medical Center, I went to um, the partnership clinic and I went to um, the Santa, Santa Cruz Health Department um, and here's my order of ranking, you know, at one, two, three, and here's why. And then the organization would be interviewing other students and they would do the same thing. They would say, well, we met these three students, here's the order of ranking. Oftentimes they'd say, we would be happy with any of them. And so we try to make a match where you would get, you would get your first choice and the organization gets its first choice. If there's a one-to-one -one match, then we would try to do that. We would offer you that uh, and the organization that opportunity. But sometimes it doesn't work out that you get your number one match, but you would get a number two or three match that would still be really great for you and the organization really would want you. So it's a, it's a matching process. And that's why it takes a little bit of time. We don't just assign you to an organization. We, we send you through the matching process. Cesar, is there anything you want to comment on that? Yeah, I just want to say, um, I know on our website, we have some of the organizations that we partnered with before. So maybe when you apply, you kind of have an idea of where you want to, where you want to intern. But I think one thing I want to highlight is just kind of come in with an open mind and be open to exploring other organizations that maybe you've never heard of. <laughs> you know, I know we, we, we know like the big organizations, but maybe there's you interview with an organization, they're like, wow, I've never heard about them before, but my future work my, and my passions align more with this smaller organization than maybe a big organization, um, like a big hospital organization. So definitely um, have an open mind and, and, and yeah. Yep, yep. So that, I think that's really important because some people are like, oh, well, that doesn't sound like, I had one person who, there was an opportunity in, um, it was something called supply chain management within the health industry. And they're like, well, I don't want to do that. I never heard about that. That's not what I want to do. And then they got in there and then like, oh, I really like this. And then, and then they ended up getting a job there and they ended up, their whole career became in, ho in health hospital, uh, you know, in, um, in uh, supply chain management because they didn't even know it existed before, but they were open to it. As Caesar said, they learned a lot, they enjoyed it and they did really well. So this is a chance to explore. I guess that's the thing, right? This is about getting exposure. It's about getting experience, you know, mentorship, networking, you know, those kinds of things. Other questions? Or Caesar and Abu, anything else you'd want to add? Oh, um, uh, Mylene, is that raise your hand yet? Yeah, I had a quick question because I have heard that some people do not get placed into internships from years past. So if, that, if the case that happens, it's not a reflection of us. It's not, it's just that there's no like good fit for us, correct? Oh, that's, that's a great, that is a great question. And you're absolutely right on target. Um, we, uh, it's not a reflection on the, the candidates. It's, it's that, you know, we have more, many more deserving um, candidates than we can place. And, be, and the, the, our limiting factor is the number of organizations that are willing to host and pay for the intern because they pay the, for the intern in addition to hosting. And sometimes it's just not enough organizations host or they want to do something. Oh, we want people who are good at, at data analysis or we want somebody who wants to work in biotech or, and then that may not be what you're good at or what you want to do. Um, and, but, and so, um, or they may be in a geographic, like maybe the one you really want to go to is in Sacramento and it'd be a great fit for you, but you, you can't relocate to Sacramento. So please don't take it personally. If you, if you don't get accepted, it's not a reflection of you. It's just, um, yeah, not having enough placements or a good fit. Um, the other thing I'd say is a couple of things are if you applied before and you didn't um, get uh, chosen, you can still apply. We definitely encourage that. Um, sometimes the other, oh, the other reason you may not get chosen is maybe you're too early in your career. I don't know how many people here might be freshmen or, or just in your first semester of your sophomore year or something. 
and and we 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 do have freshmen and we do have sophomore so that are in our program all the time but it's we tended to have people that are more in their going between their uh, they're in their senior year and graduating, or they're going between their, their rising seniors, they're going between their junior year and their senior year, just because the, um, uh, you know, they, sometimes you just have more coursework, you have more skills, you have more experiences, you know, you have a little bit more um, to offer to an internship organization, you know, at that point in time. Uh, so yeah, don't be discouraged um, and don't take it personally. So what kind of things do interns do? Um, Caesar, you want to comment on like what kind of things that you did and maybe what things you've seen other students do? Yeah, so so I, um, I touched a little, a little bit about it before, but it was, I, it, I think it comes also down to uh, the needs of the organization at the moment um, it, and also how much you're willing to take on. I know it is 10 weeks full time and there might be, I think there might be a central project that you work on for the organization, but you know, organizations have a million projects going on, right? So once you're there and if you're able to kind of take on all these other smaller projects, um, most of the time they're more than willing to kind of, you know, you know uh, let you have those projects to take on as well. I know for me, uh, my main project was working with our, data, our diabetic population, specifically those who are Spanish speaking, but I also worked with other different departments throughout the organization um, in the smaller projects that they had that I can take on also during the 10 weeks. Um, I know we have the factor of doing the 10 weeks, right? So some of these projects can last a year, two years. Um, so and that's also where it comes down to like if they see that you're putting in a great effort and they see that you are could be a great member of the team that's when a lot of the times they want to hire you on because they see that you would be a great asset to the team and they see that you can kind of propel the project forward uh right and i i've seen the same case with a lot of other um interns as well um so it kind of it kind of depends on on the needs of the organization and how much you're willing to take on um uh, Jeff, do you, do you have any other? Yeah, no, I just say so. So each year when we recruit an organization, the organizations would um, we ask them what kind of responsibilities will people will people have, and then they usually share that what kind of skills they're looking for, and it could be a wide range of things. And some some of them are more management oriented. They're like, oh, we do a data analysis around the patient satisfaction data, or help with looking at the process. Uh, re, uh, getting pe people from the emergency department up to the ICU, or um, or it might be more of a population health thing. Well, let's do let's look at the doing a needs assessment of the the Latino population in um, East San Jose around um, different health issues. It could be a COVID nineteen issue. I mean, it it really kind of varies, um, or it could be more health education oriented, um, or uh, or IT. So. Each year, each organization looks for something different. And so that's why, again, we wanna hear from you what your interests are and we would do our best to try to place you with organizations that do that work. But they are, they're definitely more practical oriented. They're not about clinical, they're not about, about research as well. Um, There's some questions about the, uh, what we look for in a statement of purpose. And I know Abu mentioned some something, uh, some things about that, which I think are good highlighting experiences you've had, uh, particularly relative to the kind of internships that we have, and that's really important. I think it's it's um, we're looking for it to be um, concise and um, and uh, to be your best writing that you can do. You know to to make sure there's not gram grammar and spelling errors and spacing errors and things like that. And part of why we're doing this is it's practice for you writing a statement of purpose for graduate school, because that's um, that's what you have to do and to apply to the different graduate programs. And so you can also highlight your experiences on your resume and those kind of things. But we do really want you to talk about, and there's some prompts on the on the statement of purpose about things we're looking, you know, questions for you to ask. There are things like, what is your current career, you know, health career direction? Um, what are you passionate about? Um, what, uh, you know, kind of what are your, what would you like to get out of the internship? What do you contribute to the internship? So I'd say just like in any graduate school application, follow the prompts, like follow the instructions um, and then, you know, have your, 
um, speak from your heart, you know, um, and, and do a good job of writing. Have other people look at your statement to give you some feedback. Um, so I guess, yeah, those are the things that we're looking. We're looking for fit. We're looking for the, your passion and your desire to get at what you want to get out of the internship aligns with what we have to offer is the other thing. So if somebody says, oh, I'm, I'm interested in getting my MD and PhD and I'd like to do clinical research, you know, in a wet lab, someplace, I'm going to go, well, that's not, that's not what we offer, right? Um, but if you say, oh, I'm really passionate about working with the Latinx community and, you know, in East San Jose or East Palo Alto, and I want to do, you know, work on, on policies that help empower the community and, um, or, you know, education about HIV or, or um, COVID, you know, something like that. And then I, my plan is to become a health administrator or a health educator um, you know, I want this internship because of X, Y, Z. That's the kind of thing we're looking for. Ah, Caesar's provided you with some um, project examples, which is really good. Yes, definitely okay. take a look at that. They're pretty detailed. So that the, the great examples from previous um, alums. Great. Sorry, I was going. Caesar. So somebody oh, says sorry. you live in the, yeah. the Bay Area. Oh, go ahead, Abu. Oh, no, sorry. I was going to say there was a question um, in regards to if non-summer internship opportunities are um, ah, provided. Good, good question. So uh, right now we're recruiting for our um, summer internships in summer 2021. Um, we are offering, we started offering some fall internships this this. Um, uh, semester and we will we will be having fall internships in 2021 also i'm not sure that we're going to have spring internships i think there's there's a little bit too much up in the air right now about with covid and about uh the financial situation with with health organizations and so i'm not sure i don't believe we'll offer spring internships but we will have summer and we will have fall and the summer and the fall ones could be part-time um, and they could be academic year. They could really actually carry over into the spring as well. There's a question of what are some of the names of the hospitals, medical groups, and uh, community-based health centers. So, you know, Kaiser obviously hosts some of our interns. Uh, Ravenswood Family Health Centers um, hosts our interns on the peninsula. Um, the Santa Clara um, Health Services um, hosts, hosts interns. Um, Sutter Health, different facilities that Sutter Health operates. Um, we have health departments, um, the Alameda County Public Health Department, the Contra Costa Health Department. Uh, we've had San Mateo and Santa Clara over the years. I'm, I'm not sure what we're going to have. We've had Monterey um, County Health Department. Um, and uh, we have um, Children's First Medical Group in Oakland is a, is a medical group, Brown and Tolan uh, Medical Group. Um, our website, I think, will list also um, what many of the, our, our examples of host organizations are that are in the in the Bay Area. Yeah, and Caesar's already beat me to that. <laughs> Thanks, Caesar. Yeah, of course, no problem. And then just one thing, also, you know, um, these are organizations that have worked with us in the previous years. But uh, I guess one thing due to COVID, you know, sometimes the the organizations might change or we might add new organizations. So definitely, it's not an exhaustive list, but it's definitely a list that you can kind of look at and get a, a better idea as well. Yeah, we're always getting new organizations. You know, for example, I mentioned I think we're going to have some biotech um, opportunities this year um, on sort of on the business and the customer and the product development you know, side of, uh, of that, which I think is exciting. And we already are getting new organizations. So don't, don't let the list be a limitation. Um, know that they're, they're all, we're always adding more um, examples. Um, and, then, um, and then also not, it's not a guarantee that all of those will come back because of the, the situation that we have. What do we look for in the interview um, after you've applied? You all are asking some fantastic questions. And it's gonna be helpful to you as you go forward. Well, in the interview, I'll share my perspective and uh, Caesar and Abu can add theirs. Um, the, uh, in the interview, you know, we're looking for people to be on time as, as you would for an interview. We're looking for professionalism. Uh, you know, we would want you to dress as if you're dressing for a, um, you know, a professional interview and, and uh, but you know, do the best you can with what, with what you have. Um, but you know, we're looking at your ability to articulate, just like you do in the statement of purpose, um, what you're interested in in health or what the different directions are that you're considering. 
and to be able to talk about what your passions are. We would, we're looking for people to talk about examples of when you've taken initiative. Like one of you, oh, one of you kind of been in a situation where, and again, this could be in a class, in a club, in a church, in, a, in your community, um, in an internship, whatever it is. When did you sort of see a situation where you stepped up and took some initiative? We're similarly looking if there are situations where people stepped up and took some leadership. Um, they can be kind of one and the same. We'd like to hear about examples of things that you've done um, in the community or in your club, student clubs or in classes that are related to public health or healthcare of your interests and what you learned from those and what you what the results were from those. You know, we're going to ask you things like behavioral interview questions about, oh, you know, what are your strengths and, you know, what are some areas that you could be in where you could have some improvement. Um, you know, are you give an example of when you worked on a team, you know, and how how that's gone. Um, so uh, yeah, those are some examples. But and then we're going to ask you your interests, and we're going to ask you like, why do you want? Why are you interested in working in a hospital? And uh, why are you interested in working in a community health center? And, and it's okay to just be exploring. Um, so those are some examples. I know, Caesar, Abu, anything else you would look for? Uh, I think um, one thing that I would highlight is, I know right now a lot of the interviews that we're doing are through Zoom, but I still try to kind of keep the professionalism even through through the screens, right? I know we, because back we used to do the interviews in person, um, but this time, you know, kind of, you know, always dress to impress, kind of be like if you're going to a job interview, because essentially this can become, it could become it a job, right? We, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is an interview, especially um, um, we, because you are still offering a position and stuff like that. So definitely treat it like if it was a job, because um, it can be. I would also say you have, have done your homework on HCC, like have looked at our website, have, um, have you know, come, come prepared. So we're looking that not, you're not gonna ask questions that are on the website um, and that, uh, and then I'm giving you, this is what I'm hearing from health employer organizations is that they're looking for people who have enthusiasm. Um, and even though it's hard right now, given all that's going on, they like people who have um, enthusiasm and they, they've learned a little bit about what the organization is like and they can say, oh, well, I'm, I'm passionate about your, what you're passionate about. My values are similar to what HCC values and being enthusiastic. And it's, sometimes it's hard if, if life is treating you rough that day, but and if you've had 25 Zoom classes before you come to your interview or something, right? Um, but I think smiling um, and, and uh, <laughs> making eye contact and um, you know, if it's in person for sure and making a connection with the person um, but even if it's on Zoom, doing your best to, to, to sort of be, be positive. I've, I've had interviews where I start out with students. I say, oh, how's your day going? Well, it was a little bit rough. You know, I really didn't, I couldn't find a parking places when they were looking for an interview. I drove around and it was tough. And I, you know, my dog ate my homework. And, you know, that, that's how they start out the interview. And it's like, you know, let's, I know life is hard, but let's, let's start a little bit more upbeat, you know, in the interview. So, so try to do your best to be sort of enthusiastic and upbeat and make a connection and and uh, and just be yourself is the other thing too because you all are amazing and we want to we want to see who you are you don't have to try to be somebody that you're not um and then i also really want to um add to ask questions at the end of the interview um oh, I God. Think, yes yes <laughs> employers absolutely love when you do that because it shows that you are interested it shows that you know you're not just there um, I don't know, for the money or just, you know, for the sake of it, it, it shows that you're, you genuinely actually want to know more. So definitely come with questions um, that will make you look good. And then it also help you stand out for sure. So. Absolutely. And I, I mean, I can't emphasize that enough because when we're going, we are going to ask you at the end of the interview, what questions do you have? And you want to be able to pull out and show that you written, wrote it down ahead of time and go, oh, well, my first question is what about blah, 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 blah. Like the little questions you've all been asking here, you know, are really, are really good ones. It shows that you're, that you are interested and you've done your homework and that you're curious. You have some curiosity, you know, about what you're getting into, which is something we're looking for. Uh, what are some examples of, of experiences involvement that can increase somebody getting accepted? I think being able to, you know, we, we value a lot of different kinds of experiences. So if you're 
um, in a, I, I think uh, Ugo mentioned that there, there you may be forming a, you know, like a health a club, a student club around different health kind of issues. And if you, if you participate in the club, if you had some kind of a role within the club um, or you did a project, you know, that's a good thing. Or if you, you worked in your community, maybe in your community, you worked on some kind of a, a project um, that was related to improving the health or, or education, you know, health is influenced by a lot of social determinants, right? So did you work on anything, you know, that was related to social or to education? Were you, did you help other students in, in the pipeline and, you know, in some way? Um, were you a tutor or a mentor or, um, you know, did you do some kind of research project um, that you did for a, a paper that was on health equity or on, you know, uh, a health policy topic or something like that. So I think, um, did you volunteer in a homeless shelter and just, you know, I mean, like thinking of, of it, there's a lot of things that just show that you, you have begun to do your best to get some exposure and experience and to build your skills going towards whatever direction that you want to go in. And you've, you know, you've worked with community, you've worked with teams, you've worked with people um, those are, or you work with data. If you're all about data, you work with data or computers or, you know, other things that, that you want to do. Uh, let's see. Yes, the application. Thanks, Cesar. It is open until the 13th, like midnight on the 13th, but I encourage you not to wait until the 13th to start your application because there is the statement of purpose part of it. Um, you can save your application along the way when you're, but make sure that you're doing that as part of it. Uh, so it's okay to go on and fill out different kinds of things and upload your resume, start your statement of purpose, and then come back to it um, at another time. But you can also do your statement of purpose on the side, you know, a few times and, and do various versions and then kind of upload it when you're ready. So, um, but but do, do start and, and go through and see what we're asking. And then you can go back and go, oh, okay, here's additional information you know, that I need, let me think about it further. Great questions, everyone. Hey folks, uh, we still got a few, a few, some more time, but I need to do something administrative one more time. Uh, Natalie's put in the chat, uh, the link to our workshop survey that again, the Dean insists we do with every workshop. So please, please uh, help us by filling out both the uh, registration links. I know there's eight of you who haven't filled it out yet and also the workshop survey so that we can continue holding these workshops for you folks, okay? Yeah. But please continue the good dialogue. Okay, um, there was a question about the fall, when we would know about fall internships. That's probably not gonna be until the summer of next year, I would guess. It might be in the late spring, but all of our focus now is gonna be on trying to line up the, the summer internships. It may, I mean, it may be probably maybe midsummer or something we know about fall internships uh, about that next year. Uh, let's see. Um, are you allowed to submit videos or creative projects? Um, that's really cool uh, and, and creative. I, I don't know if there's a place in the application. I don't think there's a place in the application to do that. Um, but it may be that um, when you make the interview round, what I've had people do when they've come to the interviews, they say, oh, here's my resume. And oh, by the way, here's, here's a you know, um, a flyer of something that I worked on, or here's a, a you know, a student a paper I did from one of my, that practical oriented paper I did for a class, or here's, here's a couple of links to a video, or they send a follow up, they send a thank you note to the video uh, interview, which is always good, right? Hey, can I get, ask for the person's email so that you could send them a thank you note afterwards. And then you can, in the thank you note, you can say, oh, it was great to meet with you. By the way, here's a couple of links to videos that I've worked on, or, you know, or my portfolio or something like that, you can certainly, you can certainly do that. Um, if you have more questions in the, in the future about the internship, um, you can reach out to info at healthcareers.org. Um, Abu would be another good person to, um, to reach out to for questions about the, the internship, uh, but the info at healthcareers.org is probably the best way to, to do that at this point. Um, and then what date will you know if you got the interview? Um, usually, uh, you know, it, it may depend this year on how many applications that we get and how many host organizations that we have and what's the situation. But usually you would hear in early to mid-January 
but it could be all the way till the end of January. Um, sometimes we interview in different waves where we have some people interview in, with certain organizations first because maybe where they live is close to some of our partner organizations that are, they wanna interview students first and maybe other people are gonna come a little bit later. Um, so I think I wouldn't be too anxious. I would sort of just wait to see you know, what you hear back. Um, and, uh, and I would probably be thinking, mid, I, I shouldn't say early, maybe mid-January to late January could be into February as well. And you will know, get some communication from us by then that would say, oh, you know, hey, we're still considering you, you know, we need a little bit more time. Um, you, you'll hear from us in that way. I think we got all the questions unless there's anybody else. Is, is Were there any questions we did not get to? There was, the chat was pretty busy today. Yeah, good job. <laughs> I have one hypothetical question. Sure. So. There's a lot of optimism about the announcement of the vaccine for COVID-19 uh, that was made yesterday and today, that potentially we could have herd immunity established in the United States by June, July. If that was the case and and the agencies that are hosting our students want to go live, then, then more than likely that would, the students could be looking at not virtual work, internships, but potentially in-person internships. If, 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 if we're dreaming, <laughs> that uh, we're going to get organized and immunize a bunch of people. Yeah, I think that, you know, I, I think we don't know. Um, and I really like your scenario that, hey, if we get the vaccine and we get, you know, people are feeling good and organizations are going back. And well, I really hope and pray that that's going to be the case. I think there's just, and, and we would certainly, we, we follow the lead of the host organization. So HCC, we're, agnostic about whether people are getting, we, we, we would prefer people to get in-person interviews, um, I'm sorry, internships, but we're also open to virtual or hybrid ones. But, but since we're not the ones that are offering the placement itself, we have to follow the lead of the organization. And some organizations I think are gonna be conservative. Um, like there's a company I talked to yesterday, they said, you know what, we're just gonna assume it's gonna be virtual um, because we, we'd rather plan for that. And then it, if something changes and we can come back, that's great. But we're going to assume it's going to be virtual. Others are going to wait and see. Um, and I also think it may be different with health provider organizations that they're, they, you know, they have COVID patients coming in and out. They may be more restrictive about whether people are coming into their facility than if it's a, you know, an office a office someplace that it's more whether the employees are going back or not. So, you know, let's hope that we have, you know, that people are healthier. Um, and that we have in-person interviews. Let's hope, I mean, sorry, internships, but um, remains to be seen. Thank you for that wonderful answer.